Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Delilah. If you are new here and I'm going to walk you through what 24 hours with a newborn looks like for us. Now we don't have a solid routine. I would call it more of a rhythm because we are not on a strict time schedule, but there are certain things that happen around certain times of the day. And so this is what our typical day looks like for us right now. It is around 4 p.m. when I started filming this video and what you just saw is me sticking away down my shirt. That is a trick that I learned from my good friend Sarah. My body heat helps warm up the wipe a little bit just so that it's not quite so shocking on their little baby bums. So we are starting this video off solid with a diaper change and a feed. These two things usually go hand in hand for us unless there is a blowout or you know a poop that happens outside of the eat play sleep schedule. She'll eat as soon as she wakes up and then she'll be awake and I'll try and stimulate her just a little bit before she goes back to sleep. This routine has worked really well for us. So we are starting off with the eat portion of that schedule. I filmed this when she was about two, three weeks old. So she was still very new. Um, she didn't have like a solid routine yet. We're slowly getting into that now at one month postpartum. But when they're still very new, they don't have like a certain time of the day that they usually feed. So the routine is all over the place. It's different every single day. No two days are the same, but generally speaking, this is how 24 hours looks for us right now. Now Annabeth is a little bit of a gassier baby. She doesn't love being set down on her back. She really enjoys being upright, especially right after a feed. So very often I will put her in the wrap to get things done. That way she is snug and cozy. She's next to me and she's upright and I'm still hands free. This is a really beautiful way that we've been able to bond and be together in this time, especially considering she is my fourth baby. And I don't have a lot of time to just sit Sit and hold her these days. There's a lot that is demanded of me every day and so I need to be able to move around, to use my hands, to help my other children, to clean, to do things. So the wrap is the perfect solution for this. So after her feed, it's about 4.30 and I'm taking 10 minutes to do a tidy up around the house. I do this frequently throughout the day. Sometimes I'll even set a timer. This really helps to maintain the home, at least to a level that doesn't feel like it's falling apart. The home isn't perfectly clean, but it's tidy. And, and that's what we're going for right now. Not perfect, but good enough. Usually before supper is when I'll take time to just walk around tidy the house, set the table, get things ready for the next part of the day. Um, today I was also taking a minute to just go over school lessons for the following day just so that I was familiar with them. We do homeschool and our curriculum is open and go but I like to be familiar with what I'm teaching before I teach it so I can teach it to the best of my ability. Especially right now because I've got mom brain and my mind is very full these days. We have such a beautiful, wonderful community who just surrounded us with love and food. So much food, so many meals. This day, a friend of ours brought us a meal and I didn't have to do any cooking. I just had to set the table and serve and it was amazing. If you have a friend or family member or someone who's a new mom and you're wondering how you can help them, bring them food, offer to help, offer your time. That is the best and biggest thing that you can do for a new mom. They are preoccupied with a new baby, uh, possibly other members of the family, trying to tidy their home and keep up with usual tasks on top of healing from giving birth. And so new moms, the best thing that you can do is not just give them material things, but to offer your time and your help. Zach has been able to take some time off of work, so he's been able to help out more around the house as well. Regardless, he always helps with supper cleanup, and this is the time when we really try and tidy up the house, specifically the kitchen. The kitchen is the heart of the home, and we try to make sure it gets really good and clean 
after supper time. You can probably hear baby noises in the background. Annabeth is waking up from a nap, so I might have to pause this for a minute and go feed her. Supper is usually cleaned up and done around 6, 6.30. We usually like to eat around 5. Uh, so at this point, we were getting ready to go for a walk and spend an evening with the family. But I had a few minutes of time and we had this loaf of bread that had been gifted to us with one of our meals and it was starting to get dry and old and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I figured, why not make tomorrow morning a little bit easier? Let's prep breakfast now so that all we have to do is just pop this in the oven and we don't have to worry about cooking in the morning. People ask me how I manage to stay on top of everything and my biggest piece of advice is to always be one step ahead. Always have a solution for the problems that you're able to predict. I mean, you don't know for sure what's going to happen every day. Every day looks different. But if you know, for example, breakfast is coming and you have nothing prepared, prepare something for breakfast when you have an opportunity so that when breakfast comes, you have a plan. And that looks different for us every day, but this is what it looked like today. After evening activities were over, Annie was awake and she was ready for another feed. So we did a little diaper change first. The kids got into their jammies. The kids got some of their own kisses and cuddles in as well. And we don't usually do this, but this particular night we sat down to watch a little bit of a documentary together. We've been trying to lean away from screen time, especially during summertime while it's nice outside, but sometimes with a newborn, I'm exhausted, Zach's exhausted, the kids just want to play and be together, but we don't really have the energy for that. Sometimes a movie is just a really nice way to spend time together. So during this time, Annie was fed, burped, and then she had a little bit of awake time and some cuddles with her siblings. Now around eight o'clock is bedtime. Um, Annie doesn't necessarily go to bed at this time, but this is when the big kids go to bed and I am usually the one taking care of Annie while Zach does the bedtime routine with the older children. So he's off getting them ready for bed and Annie's getting yet another diaper change. <laughs> I did not realize how often I change a diaper or feed a baby until I filmed this video. Now every night before the kids go to sleep, they ask if they can cuddle Annie. So she makes her rounds in all the kids' beds. They each get a few minutes cuddling her uh, before they go off to sleep. Zach and I will tag team throughout the day. We'll each just work together wherever we're both needed. And this time, Zach took Annie and got her swaddled up and put to bed so he could spend some time with her and I could spend some time with the big kids. I try to make sure I'm getting some quality time with the older kids as well, together and individually, because I know a lot of my time right now is just spent with Annabeth because that's where I'm most needed. But I want my other children to feel like they're not as important to me anymore. I want to make sure they know how much I love them and how much I want to spend time with them. So I try to make that a priority as well. Once the kids are in bed, it's mama's turn to get ready for bed. So I'll start with brushing my teeth and doing some skincare. I gotta say, I've been using Dime Beauty for the last, oh, I wanna say like nine months, and I have loved using them. I do the same routine uh, before I go to bed and then again in the morning. So I start with Hyperglow. This helps to even my skin tone. Then I'll go in with the Hyperglow, which helps bring back some of the moisture into my skin. And then I finish it all off with the Dewy Day Cream. These are my holy grail products and my skin is so soft and so happy because of it. And I actually have a discount code for you guys, so I'll leave that linked in the description box for you. Around nine o'clock is when I will usually sit down to do a little bit of editing or emails or some kind of computer work. This is one of the only quiet moments in my day and so I'll just take like half an hour to an hour to get as much work done as possible. I like to get cozy, get in my PJs, do you know my skincare and get all ready for bed. And then I'll usually do my work while either holding a baby or having a little baby sleeping next to me and it's really very sweet.
around 10 o'clock is when I go to bed, but before I go to bed, I first like to feed my babies. This is something that I learned the hard way, <laughs> but after having four children, I have learned to always feed my babies before I go to sleep so that I can have as long a stretch as possible before I have to wake up to feed again. Annabeth is usually like asleep for the night at this point, so I do have to wake her up. She doesn't always wake up, but she'll wake up just enough so that she can have what's called a dream feed or where she's mostly sleeping, but she's still feeding, so she's getting her belly good and full. In those first couple of weeks after having a baby, my milk has not yet regulated and so I'm also using a hand pump or usually a haka while I'm nursing. So I'll attach the haka to the other breast um, that she's not nursing on and it catches all the letdown. It helps relieve me and it gets an extra stock of milk in the freezer for later down the road. I just changed her diaper. <laughs> Like, two minutes ago, she filled her pants again. <laughs> I change a lot of diapers in a day. <laughs> and that's usually how it goes. I'll change a diaper and that's when babies like to poop. But after she is fed and burped and changed, I will wrap her up again and set her in the bassinet. She usually starts her night there beside me in the bassinet. Throughout the night, she usually ends up in her bed and we do co-sleep. I know that is a controversial topic um, and it works for some, it doesn't work for others. For us, it works and it's something I've done with three of my babies and I've loved it. Around 10.30 p.m. is when I turn off the lights and we settle down to sleep. Now for that middle of the night feed, I will say I am blessed with a baby who sleeps very well at nighttime and I only have to feed her maybe once or twice. This particular night she gave me a very solid stretch of sleep and so I didn't have to feed her until about 4 a.m. For the first couple of weeks when they're still so little and my milk has not yet regulated, I will get up and do the whole nursing routine. I'll get up, I'll feed her, I'll burp her, I'll change her. This particular night she thought it would be really funny to just pee all over me and all over the bed and all over herself. <laughs> that was fun to deal with in the middle of the night. Um, but instead of changing the bedding right then and there, instead of waking Zach up and moving everything around, I ended up just <laughs> sleeping on a towel and uh, sleeping in the pee because that's what you do when you're super tired and desperate for sleep. But she got uh, yet another diaper change and a clean sleeper. Uh, and a clean swaddle <laughs> and um, I got her all swaddled up and back in bed and you can tell the light is getting brighter outside so I had been up with her for a little while but before I could go back to sleep for another hour or two I uh, put my milk into a milk bag and Zach so kindly brought it over to the kitchen for me. That's kind of the routine we do is I do the feeding and the changing and then Zach does the getting up to bring the milk to the fridge. Around 7.30 or 8 o'clock is when we wake up these days. I used to wake up around 5 a.m. so that I could get a head start on my day because the mornings are my favorite part of the day. And I didn't realize how much we relied on that few hours of me being awake early and just like starting the day and getting the laundry going and getting breakfast ready. But right now that's just not possible with me waking up throughout the night. I'm just far too tired. We wake up with the kids, we let the kids wake us up, we cuddle in bed, we stay in bed for a while, they'll usually come to our room with snacks because they're hungry, and so we'll just have snacks and we'll cuddle and we'll talk and we'll wake up slowly, and it's really sweet, it's a really beautiful time. So our, our days are a little bit out of routine and off right now, but that's okay because it doesn't last forever. And these slow mornings are so precious. So at this point, Zach is getting up and he's starting to get breakfast going. The kids are kind of back and forth between seeing Annabeth and seeing what I'm doing and then going over to the kitchen to help with breakfast or playing or whatever. Very often it happens that Annabeth wakes up for the day right around the time when the kids want to eat breakfast. So very often 
I'm in bed feeding Annabeth while Zach is making breakfast and getting them fed. But of course, before they do that, they all need to have their cuddles with Annabeth. It used to be that I brought Zach coffee in the morning. Now Zach is the one bringing me coffee in the morning while I nurse and it is very sweet. This is a very sweet and tender time and I try to make the most of this time by not picking up my phone and trying to stay off of social media and instead either reading my Bible or praying or listening to a podcast or to some music and just really soaking in this baby stage because this baby stage goes by so fast. And I feel like we miss so much these days because we're just so distracted by our phones that we don't just stop to appreciate these slow mundane moments and I am trying so hard this time not to let those pass me by. After her first feed of the day she gets a diaper change and then she gets changed into her day clothes as well. This is when I migrate from our bedroom into the kitchen and Annabeth and I join the rest of the family for breakfast. At this point, it's already about nine o'clock and Annabeth is going to have a little bit of awake time. So like I said, she does the whole eat, play, sleep thing. So she just ate, now she's going to play. The kids will spend time with her, Zach will hold her, she'll spend time just observing us. And then after a while, she'll be ready for another nap. In the newborn stage, their awake windows are very short. They, they need a lot of sleep and so they're not awake for a long period of time. It doesn't take long and she's ready for a nap again. The biggest thing that I'm doing differently this time around is trying so hard not to forget to read my Bible, not to forget to pray, to really make sure my faith stays a priority. If I don't have time to read my Bible while I'm nursing in the morning, I'll either read it at the breakfast table or at another time when I'm nursing or in the evening or the afternoon, wherever I can squeeze it in. I try and find those little pockets of time here and there and instead of picking up my phone I'll choose to pick up my Bible instead and this has made a huge difference on my mental health, I'll say that. Around 9.30 is when we will transition from eating breakfast and our slow morning to getting our day started. So I'll get dressed, the kids will get dressed. Um, I'll usually put Annie in the wrap so I can move around a little bit more freely and uh, help with tidying up. And her favorite place to sleep is on my chest, so this works the best. We don't have a homeschool room or a room dedicated to homeschool. So we homeschool in our kitchen. That's where a lot of our time is spent. That's kind of where we do a lot of our book work. So we really try and make sure the kitchen stays clean and gets clean after every meal. Then after breakfast is usually when I'll take another few minutes to do a tidy up. I won't tidy the whole house, but I'll tidy what needs to be tidied, like our laundry that got peed on the night before. I do a load of laundry every single day and I'll try and get that started as soon as I can in the day so that I can fold it by the time the day is done. And then I'll do a few other chores here and there, something that just desperately needs to be done. Like taking out the garbages, for example, because the diapers are really starting to pile up. Once we've taken some time to tidy the house a little bit, things are feeling a little bit more clean and organized, my head feels so much more clean and organized and I feel like I can concentrate so much better. So I will start to grab the homeschool stuff and get that all set out for the day and get our day kind of planned and prepared and ready. Now around 11 o'clock is when we start school these days. I usually like to start the school day around nine or 10 so that we can have most of the morning to do it, but this is just how it is right now. Usually I end up multitasking and nursing Annie at the same time like I did this morning. She had her nap and she was awake and ready for another feed. So I fed her while we did story time and then we moved on to some book work and reading and other things. Zach was actually gone this morning. He's gone many mornings either running errands or working or, or doing whatever. And so I'm often doing school alone with the kids and it actually works out pretty well. Annie joins us and observes us or she'll be nursing or she'll have a nap. I 
I really try and dedicate mornings for just being with my kids. Like this is my time with my kids. I'm not distracted by my phone. I hardly even look at my phone. It's just fully dedicated to my kids. Normally we like to eat lunch around 12, but because our days are getting started so much later, we're usually eating around 1, sometimes even 2 p.m. But we keep it really simple. We usually just warm up leftovers from the supper before, which is what we did here. And because it was such a beautiful day, we decided to eat outside. I love being able to be outside in the postpartum period. I love that we have had summer babies and we've been able to do this every single time. It is so good for me and my mental health, just being outside in my garden. My garden is my favorite place to be. And so if I can just be outside in the sunlight, in the warmth, with my baby on my chest, it is so beautiful. There's something so dreamy and sweet about it and I love it so much. Annabeth was born at the end of August so it's harvest time here so it was really sweet to be able to put her in the wrap and carry her with me and harvest all of the hard work that we had put in over the summer. I also love having all my kids involved in growing a garden. I think it's so cool that they can be a part of that and they can see how food grows and have a deeper appreciation for that. Most of my day has been spent um, just trying to keep up with everything, trying to homeschool, trying to cook, trying to feed a baby, put a baby to sleep, you know, all this stuff. So it's really nice to be able to take some time in the afternoon to get outside, breathe some fresh air, and just do something that I want to do, something um, for myself. I guess you could call this time like my self-care time. At this point, the house is a disaster again, and I will take another 10 minutes to tidy up. It's amazing how quickly the house just becomes a mess. Uh, but the kids are a part of this too. The rule is if they live in this household, they have to help take care of it as well. So they take care of cleaning up the playroom. That is their job and their responsibility. And I will take care of the other areas of the house. Annabeth feeds about every three hours or so, almost on the dot. So it had been three hours since her last feed and she was ready to feed again. During the afternoon, the oldest kids have quiet time. Uh, my youngest son has a nap and so it's nice and quiet in the house. And it's really nice that I get to spend a little bit of time just with Annabeth too, just being able to enjoy her and have that one-on-one -on -one time. Of course, after every feed is a diaper change, and then she has a little bit of play time or awake time. This is a trick that I learned a couple of years ago. If you have a gassier baby, try rolling up a small cloth or a small blanket and placing them on their tummy over top of the blanket. This position can really help release some of that air. So while we kind of played with her and stimulated her, I also had her doing a little bit of tummy time like this too. After a little while, it was time for another nap. And since I had a little bit of time left in the afternoon, I sat down and opened up my computer and got a little bit more work done. Sometimes I have time in the afternoon, sometimes I don't, but generally speaking, my work time is a little bit in the afternoon and then a little bit at night. And that brings us to the end of the video. That is what 24 hours in our life looks like right now. Um, of course, it's not the same every day. There are some days that are a lot harder than others. There are some days that are easier than others. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.